was meeting at, um, we were doing a midnight retreat, or not, or, or, I'm sorry, midnight walk or a different retreat. Um, but I'm hearing that maybe scheduling some issues with people. Or are we going to forego a retreat this year? I just wanted to put that back on the table because I know it may be difficult for some of you, or do you still want to have one and try to find a common date that maybe we can try to arrange schedules? You know, what are your guys' thoughts? Well, I think, you know, if we can do several of these sort of smaller, um, more specific events like the Midnight Walk, and do several of those over the course of the next six months, that we may be able to accomplish a lot. Um, and whoever can make it to that one particular event can make Whatever it. Whatever it is. Yeah. So I, I would not be opposed to not having it. Well, I guess, you know, I guess that's the question is how do we move forward given this is next meeting will be May and we really want to get something going like, you know, because if we're going to try to compare schedules we really only have six months. So right. just want to get an idea um, because otherwise we'll not do anything. We've talked about maybe setting out a, is it Doodle that is the, the Doodle app. Cult. Yeah. yeah. What's you know, it called? What's it called? Doodle. Doodle. It's a. Uh, it's you know basically everybody can just weigh in on when they're available and when they're not. Um, so everybody sort of plugs in their vacations, and then you know staff can look at it and say the majority of this is the this is the best window for us to do something. That might be productive to see whether there are in fact conflicts. It's easy to do. Right. Yeah, because the doodle poll, basically you're going to insert your dates, put in the date, put in the time that you might want to meet, and then we can all say what our availability is during that. It becomes much harder if it's just saying, everybody just tell me what your conflicts are. Good luck trying to figure that out once you do that. So It's actually a really simple <laughs> software to use. For the yeah. Maybe we can get a software festival. <laughs> 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 um, is that what... You think is the best course of action for everybody? You want to do it that way? So I guess the question is, um, you have your regularly scheduled board meeting right. the third Thursday of the month, you know, which and usually we don't do one in August because it's the all property owners meeting. Do you want to have another meeting, um, which would be a retreat, in addition to your regularly scheduled board meeting? I think that's the question that's, that's being the asked. That's the question because there are other things that are not just the day-to-day -day monthly things that, that come about and I think it's a time commitment for people that we can't really just stay for a couple more hours after that unless you guys want to that's an option but the retreat historically has been someplace else where we actually have you know different kind of formatting programs mm -hmm. the purpose of the retreat as I recollect is kind of like planning and I, I think it would be a good idea if we could facilitate it. Is that the purpose of the doodle poll? Well, the or doodle is that for the that's for us to see where, where our availability is. Yeah, that, that, that the availability for what? Is yes. it yes. if we were, walk or well, it could be anything. I mean, I mean, I walk the tours, retreat, or where specifically I was mentioning it as a, for the retreat, just to see how many okay. people could go at any certain time. And, and that would, on this Google thing, would, would be the dates that are possible, and we would say yep. that we can make one or two or all yep. of them. Right, correct. That you can either program to work, when, when are you not available or when are you available. Yeah. And, uh, and it's pretty easy to do because people can just knock out a week if they got on vacation or they're always doing something on Thursday nights or whatever. Um, it well, does it not depends. take long. Like, is it all? Right. Again, it depends on what Carrie and them are wanting because if Carrie is saying, hey, the the tour of the bid is on June 20, in June, and we're wanting to do it between one and five. Then you know exactly, oh, okay, now I know between one and five is when the tour is, right? Instead of just saying a general date, hey, just tell me about all of June. It's so you narrow down to specificity. So it, it makes it easier on all of us. But is the tour the retreat? No, 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 no. 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 I, if there's a retreat, my preference is, is that the midnight walk occurs prior, yes. as well as the tour of the bids. I agree. Mm -hmm. 
So that means it would be July or August to, or September if there's a retreat. That's my preference. Okay, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. yeah, and so just to put a pause there for a moment, the, just to elaborate, the other thing is there's a desire on the part of both bid boards to see what's in the other bid. Uh, there's probably less knowledge on your part as to what's in the sunset bid. There's more knowledge on their part as to what's up here, but we were thinking of doing a bus tour. I was looking at June 21st to go physically into both bids and kind of go up and down the streets. And because the discussions about whether or not these two bids join together for 2019 or whether they stay separate and also looking at other parts that are not included in a bid right now that could be included in a bid, like the corner of Sunset and Highland. Um, this, it's, you really gotta be out and physically see the neighborhood to get a sense of what's this, going this on. This would be daytime. This would be daytime, yeah. So I, I would charter a bus and um, again, I, I'd like to get that going. That's an easy thing to do actually, that would be on a Tuesday. And maybe we could stop for lunch somewhere along the way. And then um, there's another thing that we were thinking of doing um, in the, maybe in the fall, and that would be kind of a, uh, a discussion on how, how do you form a bid? How do you do it? You know, it is a multi-step process. It gave you uh, the, the chart last month. Um, takes about two years, and we're, in, we're kind of getting to get into that right now. So especially for them, some of you have never been involved in that before, to kind of understand what the stepping stones are. So we've got a couple of those things in the works. I seem to be talking a lot today. So what you just said to me is, that's my definition of a retreat. That, that's a retreat day right there, learning about what it, uh, what it has to be incorporated. Mm -hmm. that, that's my opinion. I'd rather be spending my time learning about that because that sounds like work. Mm -hmm several hours or four day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I, I'd rather be focusing on that where it's productive unless there's something that's weighing heavily. Well, I think, you know, and again, it goes back to what, what my idea of a retreat was. It's actually, to talk to what David was saying, it's a planning tool to make sure that we know for the life of the rest of this bid that we are setting the mark, accomplishing the task, and setting them up. Because to talk about how do we set up a bid some of us have been through that before and you know it's educational but if we don't accomplish what we think we're going to do or we're not set up with a strong foundation i think that we're not going to be able to we're just going to throw ourselves out there without a definition as to who we are i i believe that we still have some things that we need to get in order um we have discussions about you know what we're going to do like how we want to organize and this is um, you know, some of our consultants, what do we want to do, do we want to do, we, you know, tackle the rest of it, also to the budget that we have, because we also have, you know, funds that we have to put to work, and it may be different than what we're doing now. So those are more long-term, you know, over the next two to three years, what we'd like to do. So that was, you know, my thought for the retreat, and really getting planning in order. How much time um, do you think it would take? Um, maybe three hours or so. Because again, I mean, maybe after a regular meeting, we could just have have some sandwiches and dinner and just knock it out in one one full swoop, so we're not having to come again. But that sounds like maybe September, but I don't know if that fits in with what you're wanting either. I'm I'm game for whatever you guys want. So. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think for me it was always about the um, the schedule. What I'm hearing is it was hard for people to commit to a time frame. Um, I think the idea of understanding and maybe having a, a session on what the next bid could look like, I think is great because in order to get to where we have to be, we have to start today and get a roadmap to get there. Um, I don't think it's just isolated to one of those things. Um, so I think the idea of having that information actually facilitates the conversation because mm -hmm. If we see what we see at the midnight walk, there are things that we probably want to do over the next year. It's not yes. going to be, I see a problem today and we'll wait four years from now to tackle it. Mm -hmm. We need to tackle it today. Mm -hmm. We need to put that on the table. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the, your suggestion is great to have something after we do the various tours um, because we may see some things and we may come up with some ideas that we may want to implement or adjust you know, our focus for next year. So that's part of what I think we want to do with the retreat. I think in prior years, there was a lot of brainstorming and um, 
thinking about where do we want to be from an aspirational standpoint and still put it out there and really see if that's where we're going, what could we accomplish? Because this is a 10 year gift that we had. So it's really much more the look back and the look forward because what we tackle here at these meetings are our day to day issues of what we face. I think we need to get something more strategic in place. Why wouldn't you tack it on to the August all property owner event and just extend it and maybe come early or stay late and use the opportunity to knock down some of these walks and tours and process and digest and hear from everybody else? Do you think it's too much for, for you guys to put together the property owners meeting? Because that yeah. is a really hard. So I, I don't sense an urgency to have this retreat experience this summer. I, I sense an urgency to plan these um, excursions for all of you and, you know, kind of be, it's equipping you, because we're, we're, we're in a different spot now. Now you are beginning to think about the future. Uh, we're, we're shutting down this bit, really. It's coming to an end. And now um, this is, as I have said, this you're making decisions now that are going to last until 2029 and Hollywood is going to look so different then and we are moving into a, a completely different neighborhood experience and so um, everything we can do on staff to help you understand the potential of the decisions you can make and how creative you can be in in defining the boundaries, the program, the budget, the assessment formula. We even were talking with Sarah today. Sarah, I think I told you, is researching is it eight different bids in the in the state. She's reading their management plans and she's gonna she's gonna come up with a presentation that kind of will help you understand how other Sacramento, San Diego, um, Long Beach, Pasadena are doing things differently. One of the things we learned today is that less and less front footage is not showing up as an assessment formula criteria. Um, it's parcel size and building square footage. It's like, wow, that's interesting. We've been doing front footage for 20 years. So there's reasons for that. And it, it creates long philosophical discussions about, wow, how do you measure the impact that a building has on your bid? Does a tall building, well, here's the example. The Broadway uh, building where the assessments are about $175 a unit um, in the Broadway, there's 90 units there because most of our assessment formula is weighted on front footage. Um, you have 45 dogs out there hooping in the tree wells. That's a big impact in the neighborhood. And the total assessment that a condo owner is paying right now is 170 bucks a year. So that would speak to, hmm, what we've learned about the impact of having residents is different than what we thought. And we need to talk about that um, uh, in order to eventually come up with an assessment formula that everyone thinks makes sense. Yeah, there weren't very many. That was an office building. Right, and there were very few. We are we have trees dying because of dog urine, okay? Uh, which is actually a problem that we learn about at our conferences. There's whole <coughs> trade show exhibits on how to neutralize dog urine at the IDA conference, okay? Because this is the modern problem for business improvement district. And it's a good problem to have because people aren't walking their dogs, they're living there. So I guess my way of saying it is like, just exploring this issue alone is, is, is gonna inform how you're going to structure the new bid. And we, we, we on staff want to equip you to understand what your options are, what this is going to look like, this neighborhood is going to look like, and how you can make decisions that are going to best prepare you for the next 10 years. And so these experiences get you out and about, get you out of this office, get you out of your offices, and help you see the bigger picture. Yeah, I think the experience of the midnight walk and touring of both bids, I would wait heavier than doing a retreat. Oh, absolutely. That, that's merely a question. The whole point was, do we do this? That was a great idea. Do you want a retreat and do you want it later? That's the whole point. Not that this is in lieu of. That's not the discussion. It seems like the retreat would be where we really summarize what we gather from the walk, the tour, and then the all property owners meeting and really have a clear picture of how everyone feels and also what we assess is going on with our own first-hand experience and 
it doesn't sound great, uh, but it sounds like we need to have fresh energy when we go into doing this. It doesn't seem like tacking it on after this meeting would be as productive. I think that's a good point. Yeah. So maybe what we should think through is get through these various meetings. I think other things can come up in the meantime and revisit um, the retreat later after the summer and after the annual meeting because I think maybe the, all, the property owners may be much better things that we want to see. So at least we have some understanding for what the agenda will be. Yeah, and we can try to make that all property owners meeting something mm -hmm. that is more interactive perhaps when we're getting input from people about what their perception is of the meeting in the future. Yeah, all I ask is the sooner you can plan it, just get in the date, the better because otherwise things crop up real quick. Mm -hmm. I just, I, it would be better so that way I can set up my calendar and, and save it. Okay, so um, I'm going to send out um, an invitation for anyone who wants to do the tour, and it'll be for both bids, and it'll help me figure out what size of a bus to get. And um, the other thing that has come up is we are, uh, in, you know, hearing ideas that you guys have been sharing with us that we need to start to um, tell the story of what's been accomplished in the last eight years or even 18 years, basically, that we're coming up on our 20th anniversary in September and um, transform it either into collateral that will be used uh, associated with bid renewal or a video. Um, we are going to do some research on what that would take. If we were to hire someone to do some econometric research that would tell the story of how Hollywood's economy has changed over time, especially in comparison to areas that don't have a bid. Uh, and whether you think that is going to be helpful in um, making the case to your fellow stakeholders that renewing the bid is going to be good for business. So we definitely are um, getting, we're beginning to think about how do we do this and um, how do we need the budget for something substantive in 2017. Does that report? Yeah. So before I let Joe tell about the, we went to the Chamber Planning Retreat last um, Saturday, um, I just want to let you know that John Lyons um, was awarded a, a, a contract. Of, he's been uh, working on this Italian stadium gig, a, a, a sound and lighting uh, opportunity. Not sure what, what city in Italy, but he was awarded the contract and it's going to require a lot of um, out-of-country out of travel for at least four months. And he obviously could not be here today either. So he felt, you know, just to be conscientious, that he needed to back off and re resign. And uh, with the hopes that when he comes back and he's able to stably attend meetings again, that, you know, if there's an opening that the board would consider bringing him back. So, um, so there will, there is an opening on the board and John was on the nominating committee with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were not. <laughs> So Monica, I know, is going to work on getting someone to help you figure out how to fill John's yeah, vacancy. John's vacant, uh, John's term ends in 2019, um, so this would be probably a two-month assignment. Yeah. Um, if we could just find somebody, and then we're going to actually have another nominating committee um, for the next year because Michael, you'll be off that nominating committee because your term expires, and you know you want to re up can't be on the nominating committee. So I just want to let you guys know, just to keep it in mind, this is the list that I have, and tell me if this is your list. This is based upon our record. Uh, people that are up this year are Alyssa, Brian, um, Evan, uh, Mark, and Michael. Um, so the and actually Tony, thank you for coming in. Um, yours is Jan's, and that'll be 2017. Um, so the people that I didn't mention are people that. We're going to try and recruit for the next nominating committee. So two members from here and then one at large. Okay, Joe. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Carrie and I were able to, chain, uh, to attend to the Chamber's planning retreat last Saturday. Um, it was great. It was a uh, really, really good discussion. Um, we were welcomed by Fariba, who was the new chair, and Beth uh, Marlis from the Musicians Institute, who was the outgoing chair. Um, started it off by just kind of reviewing some of the things that she had set as goals for last year, everything including the, looking at the Hollywood sign, which you know the chamber has the licensing rights for, and 
talked about that, um, looked at some of the enforcement task forces that they've had, and even looking at issues like CEQA, and that was great to hear from Beth on, on what she had accomplished as chairperson this last year. And then following that, uh, Bill Roshan put together a fantastic panel um, on uh, looking at everything from the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative to housing and uh, the need for housing in Los Angeles. Um, and the panel was great. It, it had uh, folks from uh, Latham and Watkins. There was a woman who was a land use attorney that was part of it. Um, the uh, one, one gentleman, I can't remember his name, but he was a former deputy director for the LA City Planning. Alan Bell. Alan Bell, and he gave a fantastic um, just overview of community plans, and I'm sure you've seen the, the new motion put forward by the council members and the mayor um, related to that. And so um, it was very informative uh, to the point that we had talked uh, about doing it, hopefully again, you know, it would be nice to, to hear that information, I don't know when, but sometime again. Um, and then there was a separate report related to um, the entertainment sector and just, uh, employment reports uh, for the major employers here in Hollywood, which we know is entertainment, uh, hospitality, and uh, hospitals. So uh, they gave reports related to those industries. Um, there was a very cool presentation on Universal Studios opening Harry Potter World, which I've never read any of the books, I'm sorry, but I would want to go after seeing that video, it was cool. I guess I should have read the books. Um, Still time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lots of time. Lots of time. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then uh, one thing that was interesting was Leron uh, gave a kind of addressed this. Uh, there was a report that the larger chamber uh, had done this 2025 report related to chambers and um, just kind of trends and things that challenges that they're going to face in the future. And so um, we were able to look at this report and and just kind of envisioning what. The Hollywood Chamber or any chamber is going to look like in 2025, 10 years or nine years from now. And so we talked about that. And then we had some breakout groups, one of which was related to that and looking at um, ways that the chamber could continue to service the Hollywood area and even in some ways recreate itself, whether that be through its membership uh, structure and how that how that plays out, if it stays the same or how that changes. Um, there was another group related to Hollywood issues, excuse me, <coughs> Hollywood issues like pressing issues everything from the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative that is on you know, the March ballot now and how that's affected and played out. And then the third was on employment and uh, it seemed to be specifically focused on millennials and how do we keep millennials in Hollywood and how do we have them employed and able to live here. And so um, we each got to participate in those groups and then it rotated <coughs> and then we had a final report out at the end of the day. So um, I think they're gonna probably put together some goals uh, from those groups and what the chamber will work on. I don't have specifically what those are this at this point, but I'll share them with you when I receive them. And um, that was pretty much it. Do you, you wanna add anything? Well, I think Michael was there also, and I know he has a real real concern about sequel reform, which was discussed pretty extensively. Anything you wanna bring up? Well, uh, we talked about the moratorium, which is uh, certainly a real issue and it would be harmful for the city. and. It would only uh, exacerbate the problem with the cost of housing in the city, which is skyrocketing. Uh, but my point was just effectively we have a moratorium already in Hollywood with the sequel reform. Any one person can stop the project, and the, we're going to see more of that. So, unless we figure out how to deal with that, we're, we're looking at, at uh, major delays and projects happening in, in Hollywood at just the point where it feels like things are beginning to happen and we're building that critical mass. You know, for the benefit of the whole community. There was a good article on secret reform in the LA Times today on how it was a rather blunt instrument uh, to, to be, to, you know, be uh, used uh, and this how that there's just a, this litany of challenges now uh, to getting anything done. Um, they specifically talked about the port project down in Long Beach that, you know, it's 22,000 jobs and hundreds of millions of dollars of tax revenue that they just can't get going because a small group of people just don't want it in their backyard. You know, it's, it's much better for the environment. It's great for the economy. It's great for jobs. And, you know, the vast majority, of people, and the politicians are frustrated because they every time they try to address it, um, somebody just comes and sues 
based on the EIR. And uh, they can't get it done. Yeah, it was interesting they mentioned that CEQA, uh, the California Environmental Quality Act, when it was adopted in 1970 something, it predated the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act. It predated all of the environmental protections that have been put in since. And yet it continues to, um, it's being used not for environmental purposes per se, but you know, for what we know to be the case. So, um, but trying to get it changed is challenging. It basically, this, which is one tiny thing wrong with the project, and there's a million great things with the project. Technically, the judge can say there's something wrong with it, and gotta start the process all over again. Mm -hmm. And so, there's no real balance between cost, you know, benefit analysis on whether because nothing's, you know, not ever going to be perfect. And uh, I think the frustration that residents feel and what, uh, you know. Led to the moratorium. I think developers feel as well. I mean, developers don't like the uncertainty. It's developers like to know what they can do, and residents like to know what they can do. I think there's a lot of common interest, but the system is broken. Okay, I think this, that's the last thing on the agenda, and the next meeting is the. Um,